so we may start now the the new chapter about uh, prototyping hmm? so prototyping is a big uh, umbrella term uh, that covers uh, many different uh, techniques uh, so just to recap uh, about uh, where we are in our process so we completed actually the ideas phase where we defined uh, users context and the application so for doing what with with uh, which uh, group of users uh, and uh, this group of users is expected to use the application where when with whom and so on so this was the focus of the uh, last week and now we started uh, uh, we saw the techniques uh, that we need for the need finding phase uh, and uh, starting from this third days lab uh, you will have instructions on how to proceed with the need findings uh, where now would be the time to ask ourselves what do the users need no? so one common observation that we had uh, for your project ideas is that a lot of people try to anticipate the anticipate uh, the functionalities of the application uh, okay it's too early because that would rely on what you think the user would like mm? uh, the need finding is uh, expressly uh, putting into action some uh, some activities uh, to understand what really users want uh, and integrate them in our in our design so uh, after this phase uh, we would have the list uh, of the needs uh, of the different users after that we know what the users want at the, at the high level of description of course uh, a list of items that are that should be needs that are that will be addressed by our application the next step is okay how do we design them once i know that a user needs to be i don't know reminded of what they need to do for example so one functionality which we constant reminder or constant checks about the state of, a, of an activity somebody for helping them doing some task for example okay how do i do that what kind of interface what kind of operation what kind what should the user do first and what should the user do after that so this is the i ideation phase so where we explore different alternatives for building the, the interface and the interaction flow how do we do that uh, with tools uh, that help us in this ideation phase with this uh, analysis of the needs and proposal of possible one or more possible solutions to how to satisfy those needs then we we'll go to more details about ensuring the usability of this in the, in the, or the interfaces that we are designing here but right now we are still uh, with the question okay i know that the user needs some functionality what are the ways in which i can provide this information this functionality this service hmm? so actually uh, we are the first step uh, we wrote a sentence like this we want to help a given type of users when he's in a location at a given time without some other use all the context information why is doing some action so this is the action that we want to support uh, and the user wants to do this action not because i tell it but because they want it so uh, uh, users ultimately have some goal they want to accomplish okay so this would be our way to support uh, the uh, the users in these goals and we will try to understand what they need or what they need most hmm, because we cannot satisfy every possible need we must prioritize and understand which are the most important needs uh, using some kind of devices that are some way part of the, of the context okay the next step is the need finding so i copied three sentences that you will find in the assignment in lab two uh, so you will see on thursday but this is a preview uh, after the need finding uh, we will have uh, a list of user needs uh, that will emerge from the two activities that we ask you to do the observation of the users in their context and some interviews with a small group of users after these two you will have ma made a list uh, of user needs uh, from this list you select uh, three or four most important ones and from these two or three or four maybe you will start uh, focusing on one or two top needs uh, deep uh, um, and uh, how the, some idea about how to address those okay so uh, all the strategy to address these needs is something that we'll start uh, see today how to do that okay 
<coughs> so let's focus that from your idea we don't want to build a complete system we want to build a prototype that will focus on a one or two top needs of the users right so all the need, need uh, finding step is identifying the one or two main needs and you will discover that they are not what you think if you do well then it's finding phase hmm? okay so we have let's imagine we already are are at this stage we have we have identified a couple of uh, <coughs> real important user needs uh, for helping the users do all that stuff right so at this point what we want to do is a stage called uh, envisionment it's a strange word that means uh, making ideas visible so helping us we are creative people we are geniuses we know a lot of stuff uh, and so we want to generate a lot of possible ideas uh, and through uh, compare them and throw away the bad ones and keep working on the good ones uh, so this is part of the creative process we do it every day now when we write a function we start to write some code then i don't like it i refactor it I change or the data structure is not what i need i change so we we start working on the ideas and refining them in, uh, in coding so how to do that in interaction so it's the same kind of process exploring different ideas some of them we can explore in our mind but most of them we need to try them out you know, in order to un really understand if it's going to work well or not so how many times you write something and then you throw it away because you understood this is not the right way to go okay and you have some metrics some way of feeling saying okay this is not going well i need to change approach so, so the same process here okay only focused on the interaction rather than on the code for example and the evaluation can be done by yourself so you are designing something when you see it you don't like it okay let's change it of course it's important that you can change it without wasting too much time hmm? so you, you do, shouldn't invest too much time in exploring one idea because if you spend two weeks in exploring one idea then you will only, only explore that one if you spend two days in exploring an idea then you may be explored 10 different possibilities in the same amount of time right and maybe some of these techniques may also be used uh, for testing the ideas with <coughs> users okay this step uh, is something that will come later when we'll discuss about the evaluation so how to deal how to tell apart uh, a good solution from a bad one so right now we are focused uh, on generating solutions and be able to to fill them later we'll try to get methodology for testing the possible solution with users and or evaluating them by expert evaluation so with some objective criteria that tells us that this is better than that okay so it will be the next step so right now we'll generate possibilities and the next chapter we'll try to evaluate and filter all the possibilities of course the two steps will be in reality they will be merged Okay, but we will first discuss about the one and then about the other so i just wanted to give you some context in that and so again this is not one tool there's a variety variety of different tools and techniques uh, that will help us with this envisionment stage uh, of course depending on the stage of the project okay if we are just at the beginning it uh, may be something very 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 simple would be enough uh, if we are close to the end we must focus more on the details uh, and so the tools also will be uh, different and also is something that we need for ourselves we can take a lot of stuff for granted if something that needs to go to the users it should be more robust in a way if it's something that goes to the, the customers or the management where we want to sell it it must be shiny and, uh, and bright uh, and very positive and very good looking also because those people uh, really don't understand but they have the money hmm? and so it's important to satisfy them one thing to keep in mind is don't focus too early on the user interface it's not yet uh, the time for asking ourselves whether to put the button on the right or on the left of the window or to make it gray or green or red because we still don't know whether we need that button or we don't even need whether we need that screen on which we are imagining the button so top down let's first uh, think about the the general interaction framework and then we'll set up all the details of course we need to 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 design a good user interface but before the 
individual interface screen there is the general mm, overview of the system and okay as i said there are different techniques uh, we'll see okay uh, some of them mm, some of the most uh, say use them uh, as always keep in mind like when you write code it's the same okay it's impossible to get it right the first time so plan for failure plan for testing different alternatives don't try to make it right everything right the first time don't think too much try make an hypothesis try it out test it out have a look and change it okay you, you cannot just make everything in your mind and then write it right at the first time hmm? it's just not possible okay uh, these are the techniques uh, we will go through in this week or so let's start from uh, <coughs> the simplest one uh, basically sketches and snapshots are so you will see that a lot of this a uh, lot of what we are discussing today is very low technology okay it's just practical tangible stuff to help our mind in thinking about the project so we don't need to buy very fancy technology for doing that something for helping us so the simplest thing is just a sketch a quick drawing that could be a drawing of a part of the interface so i really don't know how to let the user select an interval of dates starting date ending date what should i put two calendars one of them one of them and then the duration i don't know let's try to make a very quick sketch and try to reason about that so it would be maybe a detail on that or maybe the user is uh, in a strange situation so maybe he's uh, cooking or he's screwing something in the ceiling so in a very uncomfortable situation so how can i give the message to to, to, the, to that user so where should it read it so let's try to imagine to, to draw the picture of the, of the the person on top of a of a staircase and in an uncomfortable situation does it read the information on his watch for example or on the screen there what is the most comfortable solution so let's try to draw it and uh, and understand so it could be an individual uh, sketches usually are snapshot so just one one photogram one instant of time where we try to capture some detail of the system to see it ourselves and to show it to, uh, to the other person of the of the design team of the group and say okay is it convincing no no it's not convincing so if the user needs to go close to this totem with their smartphone so the distance should be and the size of the totem should be and is it clear where should it put it in the left on the right is there a clear marker so we can try to reason about uh, the general interaction environment in which the application is used <coughs> so we are not in a des typical desktop environment we are on the field the environment is <coughs> different maybe different so let's think about the environment so what that constraints the kind of actions that the user can use make some actions easier to do and some other more complex to do and uh, or uh, sorry a snapshot could be more a detail of a specific device the shape the size let's try to imagine it a screen how much text does it fit and so on so this is a just a static moment a static picture um, by itself it doesn't give you the sense of uh, how it's used it's just one you see one person in a moment and you don't know what he did before and what he will do after hmm? uh, so so usually uh, these are uh, other example of sketches that try to think about how to you know lay out things on the pages and so on so they are good for reasoning about one specific problem or one specific possibility can i fit all the information that i did that i need in this screen in this interface yes maybe yes maybe not what kind of feeling should we be to the users something like this it would be enough but <laughs> usually is not enough for understanding actually the usage of the application no? because it's static we know we want to have something more dynamic understand that the user is going to navigate through the application not just 
all mm, all the action is not just in one screen no? all the action in a sequence of uh, of interactions so the first uh, simple view of the navigation possibility of a user could be navigational maps they're not very used they can be used only well, or they're used mostly in some kind of systems uh, for example i don't know if any of you have seen anything like this so this is the the full menu of an old, old uh, phone so it's not a smartphone like today it was not an android and iphone so all the you know maybe the old nokia phones or whatever they had a very constrained interaction modality so there was a menu and in this menu you go forward and backward and when is, once you are in a menu sorry that the picture is not very high quality but they couldn't find a better resolution one and uh, when you are on a given menu there are some second level items so two levels of menus these are all the possibilities it's circular because if you go forward you will go back to the beginning you have a forward and backward button and uh, and you navigate through this <coughs> it's not very uh, intuitive because at a given moment in time you only see one voice on the screen there's only one line today you have that with usually with office printers often but you have a menu on screen menu with, with small devices when you go on to, onto the bus onto the tram you try to query about your uh, the, um, um, bus ticket so there are very constrained interfaces where there's a set of possibilities that go through and so you try to think about where to put a given uh, a given uh, action in the menu and the user should this was taken from the manual at the time where manual manuals or instruction manual was still printed um, but actually the, after a while the user should have at least a big picture of this map in their mind so when we were discussing about having a mental model of how the system will behave this could be one representation of the mental model the user slowly will learn and uh, for a website is something more uh, less constrained because we don't we are not forced just to move uh, from one voice to the next or from one item to the sub items there are only two only possible movements there here we can actually move uh, across the different pages and so on so we are more free and of course uh, we need to be more consistent because if we, may, if, we, if we start making random connections then the user will never learn uh, no, about the mental model of how we move into our system uh, this is a very simple one it's a very flat architecture uh, this kind of um, thoughts uh, how to organize the information where to put in the information how to link them how to move from uh, section a to section b is usually called uh, the information architecture of the of the application so we won't have much time to dig into this topic uh, maybe we can have one hour of chat about the information architecture which is important uh, how to structure things uh, and how to label things what are the names that you should give uh, and where should we should should we, should we put them hmm? okay so that's a very specific tool it's not very useful usually usually when you're trying to plan all the all or to fit together all the different functionalities but then for each individual functionality we must work on how to design it hmm? so uh, one possibility is to make uh, sketches in a dynamic way so not just one sketch but a sequence of sketches this is called a scenario usually uh, a scenario tells a story we are trying to tell a story on how the user is interacting with the system we are not telling the story of the user we are not telling the story of the system we are telling the story of the interaction between the two so how they relate to each other during the development of an activity hmm? how the user engages with the system to solve a specific task to reach a specific goal uh, we should always be task oriented or goal oriented not just the user is playing randomly with the application no the user is achieving a goal and we see how the user interacts with the system 
while trying to achieve that goal and these scenarios may be in different formats uh, can be texts a summary a text a, 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 we tell a story just we, we tell it with words uh, we as a narration a narrative description that describe what the user does or can be a graphical story like a comic book in that case we tend to call them storyboards instead of generally scenarios or it can be something more formal like you know a flow chart a transition diagram and says okay you know imagine uml uh, activity diagrams where you say all the actions in the order that is executed or what are the possible actions that can before or after a given one mm? so there are different representations with different levels of details of, of course but they all have the same purpose <coughs> telling how the, the how the user goes from uh, i want to do this to i did it i reached my goal hmm? and uh, um, if we, we want to go macro hmm, at macro levels uh, uh, we already have some uh, kind of scenarios that will be in our needs when I have, during the need finding of course we understand user behaviors if in observation in interviews we are imagining a story in which a user behaves in some way so oh, really the, the the log of the observations is already telling us some stories well some stories about how the user is reaching a goal today but we can modify it how how will the user uh, will reach that goal tomorrow when it will use my system hmm? these are very simple very short just maybe two lines a sentence hmm? a long sentence or you can have a, a sort of a conceptual scenario or abstract scenario as it's called sometimes um, the conceptual abstract means that in these scenarios we don't want to sh show any technology or to hide it or to be very <coughs> very generic about that so maybe we see a user that goes and interacts with some device and in the scenario we never describe the device we never show the screen we only see the user while he's interacting with some kind of device or with some kind of board with some kind of uh, uh, technology so the focus is more on the what the user does and the sequence of action in which the user is interacting first with his item and then with their, their smartphone where did they put it and then uh, it goes back to the device and so on uh, we first uh, focus on how the user executes their action and then we can try to make the scenario more concrete by specifying what is technology a or technology b that the user was using during the abstract scenario and we may discover that maybe technology b can be different can make, take different shapes can be smaller bigger and so you may have different possible concrete solutions concrete implementations of, a, of the same abstract scenario and try the question is here would be what is the best technology to support these sequence of actions that were defined generally mainly with the user focus in mind with user actions in mind hmm? so we don't need always to see explicitly the two levels but in our mind we should always try to separate what is the flow of actions the flow of operations the flow of intentions the flow of information from the user point of view and this is one aspect to, that we need to design we need to design the flow we need to decide in which order the user can do some activities and separated from that the the tools that for each of these steps uh, the user can, can 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 use can adopt can exploit are, there are two separate layers of design 
we need to do both but let's try not to merge them not at least in our mind let's not confuse them first what the user does and then what is the technology support that we give to the user for this for those tasks and if we want we could go a step further and try to transform this concrete scenario into actual use cases you know from the software engineering courses probably you learned about uh, the use case description and requirements and they are very detailed information about the actor the case uh, uh, the inheritance the steps the exceptions and so on so this is a very formal description of that which is a more it's more formal that we need for just for interaction but it can be uh, needed or required for implementation so it's just a, a more detailed information you we, we will basically reason about these two okay more about the concrete because our system probably is not <coughs> doesn't have so, so such a large uh, design space but always keep in mind that the choices about the flow and uh, the devices are separate and independent okay <coughs> in all this uh, <coughs> probably the most uh, important tool to learn besides just writing a text uh, are storyboards uh, storyboards they say that they are like uh, comic books as i said a set a sequence in time of different sketches that emphasize the user while is uh, the user is carrying on a task um, <coughs> this is a definition that i took from the books uh, a graphical depiction of the art outward of the external appearance of, a, of the system without any accompanying accompanying system functionality it means we don't need to implement anything right now at this stage we only try to describe the system works you know in comic books we see people flying in, in, in the comics well, but they don't really fly or maybe they don't even really the technology for making them fly doesn't even exist but it, it doesn't prevent us from telling stories about how they do it okay we cannot make storyboards so wide because we sooner or later need to implement those technologies but at this stage is not really a requirement yet the idea is that uh, uh, having a hand-drawn hand scenarios with a, a few panels so we can think about a sequence of sketches different sketches in different moments of time but they are connected by a story by telling a single story and uh, one of the rules uh, they say that panels should uh, as a rule always include people the one i said before let's not focus on the interface too soon the interface is, is what the people see but at this stage we still uh, have to decide what the people will do hmm? <coughs> so uh, it's important having uh, people there and uh, the important part is uh, reasoning about the flow so a person seeing the sketch should understand uh, what this person wants to do and how the system will have the or will uh, be used in some stages in some steps to help them uh, reach the goal mm -hmm. um, from the literature that we find uh, they all insist uh, a lot on drawing the things uh, by hand what they say is that anybody or well, anybody can draw i think it's not true but uh, i i am one that will probably never be able to draw properly but they say that anything uh, anybody can sketch hmm? more or less at a given the, uh, and it's not important to have nice pictures so these are two nice storyboards we see bad ones but they always give the they, they give us the information that we need the idea is just having a tool for sharing ideas in the design group and with other people out, out there and actually what's important is the task how the task unfolds so what's the goal of the user and what are the different stage, stages huh, in which this task is unfolded different uh, sequences of, of, of actions and interaction people interact among themselves with other people since there's a typo here and uh, people interact with devices 
this is what we want to show interacting means uh, exchanging information means uh, sharing context being the same place for example having the same information give i give you some information um, the, you enter this information into this device and vice versa so we need to capture the points in time in which information is exchanged because there is where our system will have uh, to to support the user is that a question there may be there may be depends yeah here there were no words in this case one two three here So you're, what, what you're saying is that you would have put maybe a legend or something like that to help understand the context or the of sp or speech or thought. Or not speech because it, it, it's a long, so it would seem weird to, speech, uh, to speak aloud in the, this context, but maybe uh, um, a thought, yes. Yes, it, it, may, it may be done, yes. yes. I will see, we show, uh, I show you a couple of more examples that uh, uh, it depends, of course, on what you're trying to, to communicate. Hmm? So if there is an interaction between the people, then you can write what they're, what they're saying to each other, of course. Hmm? And this, that's the easy part, okay? It doesn't involve drawing. Um, and it's also important that if at the beginning of the storyboard I try to, uh, let's say, show what is the goal of that person at the end in the last uh, in the last sketch of the storyboard that god would, would be reached okay so we see the person saying okay i want to do this and at the end you sh you see that it, it actually accomplished that hmm? so you tell a, a full story hmm? from the goal to the end and this is, a, this is another example hmm? i took from this web page you see that the quality of the drawing here is is worse so they work quicker to draw they have uh, comments about uh, what the person is thinking they don't even need the the, the bubble just uh, a comment what a busy day i have to go home now so it's a person a few sketches it's in their office it's late <coughs> be, be, because of the clock and because of the the comment and so he's going home he understands that there's no signal in the other in the underground but uh, in any case even with no signal the application so he has some smartphone we, we don't see the interface we don't see what's on the screen we only s know that this person is happy see how happy that he was sad here he's happy here so it's just a a lot of information is here okay is in this sketch with a very uh, my dinner tonight uh, uh, my dinner tonight app so dinner tonight should be the name of the app uh, suggests uh, curried chicken only ch uh, curry chicken only 222 calories hmm? so it has a sort of a food suggestion app application that will help him choosing what to have to for dinner even if it's late even if, even if there's no connection and so the person is at, a, at a, a grocery store buying the groceries that the app is, is suggesting them and also some uh, instructions the device is always here while it's cooking and actually at the end it can eat uh, there's something probably missing here is a clock i would have a, have a, a clock here to show probably that uh, uh, the app helped them prepare their meal in a short time probably so here we already have some we see a story we see a person made happy we see some problems of some needs of the person being addressed finding recipe finding the recipe finding the ingredients finding uh, helping them the preparation working without signal and understanding the person's schedule there are too many okay it's that this is bigger than our projects would be but at least we ex we are exploring the possibility then it then we will cut it down to some key aspects okay this is a description 
uh, that was with uh, the, the legend of this uh, of this picture if we read the, if we read this description it doesn't add anything there's nothing new so the storyboard already told us everything and more and more it's less boring also okay so uh, from the same group of design they will develop they develop another application so it's another use case it's another uh, task is another goal then we can decide which ones are more important which are ones are more developed uh, the important is just writing them describing them quickly and then evaluating them discussing about them <coughs> so this is another situation in which is even later 8 p.m so he didn't have time to go uh, to the grocery shop so it doesn't he couldn't shop anything to couldn't buy anything so he tried to phone to call for a pizza home but everybody is ordering pizza out uh, tonight and uh, it would be 45 minutes uh, to deliver so he may either wait 45 minutes for a pizza or open the fridge and say okay maybe i can make something <laughs> up and uh, the the mm, the app uh, suggests that uh, a quick a quinoa salad and whatever it's only 15 minutes to, to prepare and you already have the ingredients so you don't need to go shopping and uh, it's, e or it's easy to make oh by the way this is the same identical picture as this one you see well it may be they change something but we can reuse it so uh, you know also also um, comic artists do that so there's uh, there will be probably many many elements that can be reused or maybe it's even faster to redraw it from scratch and then you can hit just 30 minutes later so it's a different set of uh, um, requirements from this app for the, for the it's it satisfies a different need he's already at home wants to do something quickly without uh, uh, buying an, anything new um okay this is a bit strange to me because it's nice to tell from a technology point of view i will put a warning sign saying but how can the app know what's in my fridge so never forget we are engineers say so we should have always have our feet on the ground it's good to imagine strange and fancy and great scenarios but afterwards we should never forget that we need to check all the requirements okay so the hidden part here is how the app knows what's in my fridge and there is no solution for that as you know which is not which is easier which is not more complex than actually really going out or or order a pizza because if I, if i try to enter every item that is in my fridge on the app uh, it will take more than 45 minutes i will become more bored than ever and so it will not work hmm? so always try to to do your engineering check hmm? we are trying to do also the work of creative designers and who say that engineers cannot be creative it's our first job and so we try to be creative also in something that is just a bit outside no, our domain but never forget about our true nature so actually what should be in the storyboards what should not be forgetting when you're trying to draw a storyboard the setting the environment off it office at home in the train just a few elements are enough to set the environment and so everybody that sees that sketch um, you know uh, exploits their own knowledge background knowledge about what happens in that environment it's an office so I know everything about offices it's a train i know everything about trains so i don't need to be specific i don't need to, need to be lengthy that in the trains you are usually standing up uh, usually there's no signal or whatever just a train station is enough to tell you that without overloading uh, your cognitive system so you can focus on what the user is doing uh, and since it is in, is, is in that environment uh, well we know a lot of things drawing a person at home or drawing the, that same person in the classroom will change the context in which you imagine directions hmm? and also trying to understand or uh, to set out uh, as soon as possible in the first panel the task the goal what do i want to do now what's my problem now 
Uh, you see that in both cases, like in all good uh, TV series, or, or okay, the first minutes, the first seconds should be some trouble. There's some trouble, or some problem, some issue. It's too late. Uh, I didn't go shopping. And then there's the development that shows you the solution to this trouble. Hmm? So don't start telling everything from uh, the year zero or whatever. Start with the, with the issue that you are trying to solve. Then, of course, the, the easiest part is the sequence. Of course, a storyboard should, should show the sequence, the steps. We don't need, uh, not yet, the detailed user interface. They will come later. Okay? We, we didn't miss the interface, screens, the details, the icons at this stage. We understood that there should be some proposition for a recipe, or there should be some <coughs> instructions for the recipe. Mm, how they appear, or whether the device is larger or smaller, well, we can sort it out. Hmm? But right now, it, it wasn't so important, okay? We have a limited number of sketches to do on the, on the screen, we have limited time. But we know where the user interface, where the device will be used. When? In which steps? In some steps it will not be used, in, in some other steps it will be essential. So then we focus on what are the support functions of our device. Hmm? In which steps and which information exchanges. Always interaction it always means exchanging information in a two, um, in two directions, in a bi-directional way. Why and which is close to the goal, why is the system used? So what led the person to pick up the device, to open the application, <coughs> to look at the screen? So there's always a first action, a first moment in which uh, before the user wasn't thinking about your system, and in a given moment he starts saying, okay, but okay, I can use that. I can go there. So what made the people think about using, starting to use the interaction with your system? <coughs> <coughs> you see that in the second case, it was only until here when the person realized I maybe have enough uh, in my fridge. Then I can check the the application in the first two panels in the, even the third one the application is not used hmm? so you are trying to plug into people's lives and say okay in that moment in your life you will you will be thinking about me hmm? because you understand that at that at that point i can help you hmm? so a sort of a trigger for the task before this trigger our system doesn't see the user we don't need to design anything the system will come into action only in that specific moment. And then, of course, the task. But, so. Finally, the user, the satisfaction. So the user is using my system now and will use it in the future if it will be satisfied with their usage, if we will uh, really help them reaching the goal. So the last panel should actually show why the user is happy because, not because he used my system, it would be a very sad person if he's only happy for using a computer. It would be happy because our system helped them reaching the real goal. Hmm? Um, okay, so these are the main points. The beginning, the setting, development, uh, and uh, satisfaction. <coughs> and about the details, uh, we may have diff- yeah? Yeah. So, okay, I think I get it. The question is, uh, do we really do we need to put time references like eight and thirty? It depends. The answer is depends whether the goal of the action, for example, is to save time. It's better to show it in some way. Uh, well, if the goal of the action is, uh, or if the context is specific in a time of day, 
so if it's some if it's something that you need in the morning for waking up uh, for uh, preparing for school then it's important to give some hint uh, that the action will be in the morning or is something for the parties maybe uh, then you will do something maybe just a moon uh, to show okay this is night time so it will help in two cases one is to constrain the context i want to tell you that this is going to happen in this time frame morning afternoon and so on like the place the location also the time of the day can be important in some cases maybe some other actions are not can be you know uh, executed throughout the day so it's not important in that case or when you are insisting on saving time so you try to show the time span that the actions called I think both of them uh, I think that <laughs> the question was uh, whether the main focus was uh, uh, saving what's in the fridge or saving time I think bo both of them uh, you know it commented about the 45 minutes uh, and then you, s you see that it's only 30 minutes is already completed I already have food on the table so it's actually all of this is saving money is using f uh, stuff from the fridge and is saving time at the same time I think this story boy is trying to tell you both you can have both you don't have to choose uh, whether to spend more time or to use what you have in ho at home but the app will help you uh, to find a win-win situation compared to what no no okay um of course uh, these are the storyboards are as we said uh, tools for communication so there's a task we try to describe it in a way that it's easy to tell and it's easy to see hmm? then uh, we cannot pack everything into one uh, all possible uh, um, goals of the system all possible features into one storyboard it's better to make many of them and uh, and people will get what they want we cannot program other people's minds to see okay you, you should see but because maybe for a person which is a may, maybe a very stressed person uh, so the time saving will come to their attention qu first say oh God, this makes me save 15 minutes and for maybe a healthy person the fridge issue will be more important that's why we try to design for many people and try to understand the needs of different people everyone will take home what they care most if nobody cares about any of the any of these then it's, an, it's not a good design because it's not acting on real needs so in this case it's acting on more than as a designer we should take track of all the needs that we are solving but the users may only see some of them and this is also true in, in the reality <coughs> no? maybe we build something that we think it's extra useful and people we don't like it huh? and that's uh, what we should be aware of maybe we discover that the timing issue that maybe from the need finding seem to be important when we show it to the user they don't care so maybe it's a feature that we don't need or it's a need that is not so important compared to others so it's not uh, these tools are here just to help us understand better the needs and the users so um okay about the format so the mo the classical one is uh, the comic book standard okay so we already know how to read comics from mickey mouse uh, when we were children and uh, even there there were some hints that if you read today a mickey mouse story that you read when you were a children you get a completely different feeling there's a lot of information packed into a story and every person will get you know, what touches them more hmm, in their way of thinking uh, it can be a comic book uh, uh, with uh, the actors uh, and we have a lot of convention graphical conventions so people know how to read comics from left to right uh, and uh, with comic bubbles with uh, dashed uh, or bub or, uh, or clouds to show thinking or with solid lines to to represent uh, speaking with the uh, comments uh, in rectangles uh, that to comment uh, for like the, the narrator voices and so on with the noises with symbols for smack uh, for uh, bang and so on uh, 
Uh, so we use a language that people already understand. Now we can attach some notes, a few notes, if, you re if we really want to specify a, po a passage that is not so easy to, to draw. And this is the normal case. In some cases, when, for example, you are create, you are you are thinking about a very dynamic user interface. I don't know when maybe you have some uh, video game uh, or you have some movies or something like that. Uh, then you could also annotate uh, the um, the sketches, the, the, the frames with movements. Usually, movement in a in a comic is only hinted at. So if you want to um, say that a person is walking, you just draw them in this position, or you make a couple of uh, lines uh, no, uh, hinting at the past positions. Okay. But it's just a hint. It's enough to understand that the person is moving. If for you it's important the actual amount or direction which is moving, because maybe it's a game, so you want to say that, okay, it's jumping up to there, then you can write a, an arrow. No? You have Prince of Persia jumping into the... Uh, the next level okay you have an arrow that say that it goes there hmm? of uh, if you have uh, you know super mario that is going to, to bang his head onto the top and then you say actually it's banging there so you put a lot little star and the line so you annotate them more than what a normal comic would do hmm? normal comic would leave more to the fantasy and here maybe you want to we want to be more precise and so we add some, uh, some more specific annotations or there could be some passages that are so or too complex no, to, to draw and so re we resort to explain something with text it's a tool hmm? there's no there are no real fixed rules hmm? so we can always uh, try to uh, use the best expression that we have and so why do they say that this should be and drawn okay there are plenty of programs for drawing drawing programs more um, generic uh, vector drawing program uh, raster vector programs uh, comic uh, drawing programs but they say no no do it by hand why well first because it's faster if it's faster to draw something than to use a program uh, to do the same thing no matter how expert you are and so we are you will be able in the same time you know, to experiment more possibilities also if you are drawing something with a program okay you are moving the picture a bit more to the left more to the right you need to align the pitch so you have some perfectionism kicking kick in. okay you want to the drawing to be perfect well done and you spend a lot of time in nudging objects making a big a, big, a little bigger little larger or uh, you don't need it really so let's focus on the importance we say that the importance is uh, the flow in the task not the size of the icon so let's throw away what's not important to make time and uh, uh, attention for what is important and also there's also a psychological issue that uh, if per if people see that you only draw uh, a, a draft they are more open to criticize it because they see it's only a draft it's only a sketch so they can tell you what they think if it's too precise first they will be they will be more attracted to the details rather than the big picture and second they understand that you put a lot of work in making it perfect look nice and so they will be more constrained more wary of criticizing it so you will extract less information if your storyboard is too nice uh, really that's what happens from from the, the scientific uh, you know finding that you, if you try them you see that you get more information if the discussion is more informal hmm? and uh, and of course the colors black and white we don't need to argue about colors because people when they don't know what to say they argue about colors <coughs> i want it more green what does it mean more green i want it more green and uh, oh, they can always argue about colors it's easy, like arguing about the weather okay and so let's throw away the possibility of arguing about irrelevant stuff Oh, it's not irrelevant at all at this stage it's still irrelevant we want to talk about tasks and flow hmm? so there are no distractions the fonts you don't need to select the fonts bigger larger comic sans times uh, arial or whatever no just in, in written as, as bad as you write okay in many cases there will no worse so hmm? and so uh, all the focus is only on what counts and what they say is that exactly actually there are a lot of styles to quickly draw people 
so this is a some example of styles uh, that are really in with, with with three or four sketches you can draw a person and give them a personality give them uh, an action and so on mm -hmm. um, this is stick people we already know them uh, from uh, X, X, XACD, the comic, uh, they, they are all, all uh, are re re drawn as stick people, but also with the hangman game, we know how to draw stick people. Star people are also very used a lot because are always also easy to, to draw because it's only one, two, three, four, five, six and uh, uh, lines uh, to draw them. And then you can draw them easily in different positions, but it depends on your taste, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, with a, with a very little variations, these are some variation of, of star people, you can uh, express movement, express emotions, and so on. Mm? Of course, it depends on also the manual ability, but in not, it's not really, you don't really need to be you know, the, the, an illustrator for Disney actually, to, to draw these kind of people. So, uh, this is, is a very powerful tool. We, you can use you can use it yourself you can use it with users trying to have a discussion about the task about the stories uh, on a on a given ground on a given uh, scenario that you made up uh, without uh, having long discussions because in discussion if you try to tell the same story in words uh, well they will get distracted they will get lost uh, in that point uh, and uh, you, you don't have you don't have to say and at this point the person is using the smartphone no because it's, uh, it's apparent from from the directions okay you see the technology is there but the focus is not on, on the technology so people really um, reason about the, the the task and uh, and uh, will appreciate that the goal of the user is reached. Hmm? Um, okay so this is the most uh, the first tool uh, sorry one of the reasons why we make why we make them uh, hand drawn probably I, I forgot to put in this slide is that it's very cheap cheap in term not in terms of paper of course yes but in terms of time and it's important because uh, we will need to throw a lot of them away because they will be wrong wrong not appreciated or we will find better ways of describing a sequence of tasks or finding a given solution so if it's something that you invested too much it will be more difficult for you to abandon hmm? don't get uh don't develop an affection with these things okay they will they will not be your friends they, are, they only are needed in that phase and then they are designed to be thrown away hmm? uh, okay so this was the first step after this of course we need uh, to move uh, once we validate the initial flow we need to move to something more powerful that can show not just the flow but also the interface with the information so but this is for tomorrow we'll t we start talking about different types of prototypes which is actually the, the major tool in this kind uh, of process okay thank you so th thank you all and then we'll discuss about the five projects that we need uh, a bit of discussion hmm? thank you